Hey everyone, my name is Anika. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator based out of New Delhi, India. I am really excited for the video today. It is about the new Adobe Fresco update that just released today. So make sure to update your Fresco app if you haven't already. But if you don't use it, it's a free app. Hey, you can download it on iOS, iPad and Windows devices. So make sure to do that and maybe follow along or just watch the tutorial. I release Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator tutorials every week. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to get notified whenever I post a new one. In today's video, we are going to learn about the new features, aka vis a -vis recent brushes, the perspective grid capture, the transforming all frames in a motion layer, the selected frame or the layer itself, some of the new brushes by Kyle Webster, the winter 2022 brush pack, and also some improvements with the eyedropper tool. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So you can see on my screen that I have this fun little illustration that I created for demonstration purposes. I have this guy right over here, a flamingo. Let's dive into what the recent brushes mean. All right. So I have a new layer selected. Let me go ahead and click on the basic brushes here and select a hard round brush. Now, let me select something from the same color palette and turn on my graphs so that I can write something and it, it is not as skewed as I think it would be. All right. So um, let's just write Flamingo over here. Okay. So I'm just writing Flamingo and that's it. Terrible handwriting, but that serves our purpose. All right. And now let's go ahead and click on another brush. As of today's update, the recent brush update is only valid for the pixel brushes. So I'm going to go into the FX brush and maybe select ink stains um, for the background. Let's change the color over here and maybe do something like, hey, there are some ink stains in here. Because why not? Now, I want to go back to the brush that I chose to write Flamingo on top. But I have come back to this file after weeks and weeks of just letting it sit on my iPad. And I don't remember what brush that was. Simple solution. Go to your brushes panel. And right on top, there's this new panel called Recents. You tap on that and these are all the different recent brushes that I have used in this file. By recent, it means that all the brushes that were used after you updated the file will be available in here. There are pixel brushes. I used ink stains, hard brown, natural inker, and some from the winter 2022 brush pack. And these are all available. So you can go ahead and choose any of the brush size and it also remembers the brush that you chose. All right, now that we are here, I want to talk about the eyedropper options as well. Did you notice if you were noticing carefully, if you're watching the video carefully, you might have noticed that I am on the brush tool. Now let's go ahead and select an ink roller brush just again for demonstration purposes. Let me delete this guy and this layer as well. I'm on a brand new layer. We have the ink roller brush selected and I want to use the eyedropper. Currently, this is my color. I want to use something like a darker tone. Initially, in the earlier days, when you use the eyedropper tool, it used to just be selected and you never used to go back to the tool that you had previously selected. So for instance, if I had the eyedropper, I could go ahead and pick any color from the canvas. It used to just select the color and stay on the eyedropper tool. With the new addition, you can actually long press that you could earlier as well. And then it just redirects you to the tool that you had prior selected, which is the brush tool in this case and just use that with a new color. So super easy, very time saving feature. I feel like with this, I save a lot of, a lot of my seconds per year. Trust me that that makes a difference. All right, now let's probably jump into a, a feature that was not released today, but also a very ignored feature. I feel like I think Kyle Webster just released a video about it, but I also want to talk about it in my video. Now, this is a sketch layer that I created and I want to use it as a reference layer. Now, it says reference layer release because I wanted to check it out first. It's a basic brush um, that I use here. It's the pencil brush that comes with Adobe Fresco. Let's go ahead and set it as reference. Now, what it does and why it's useful for you. It sets the line work as reference for you to use on any layer above or below the current layer that you can use to maybe use the paint bucket tool to fill in the closed parts. So over here, I am going to create a new layer and maybe select something like um, a darker color over here and then try to fill in the closed parts, which are referenced from the sketch layer. 
so we have this which is the closed path we have this guy and um maybe this one i'm going to zoom in quite a bit over here because i feel like these are very small paths and maybe maybe this works okay now uh, let me do this as well and now when i turn off the sketch layer which was my reference layer if you remember you can see that we have a hammer it's a silhouette of sorts and it's a very fun uh, neat trick if you want to add textures to a sketch that you already have created you can choose to keep the reference or even actually fill it on a different layer with a different color so maybe i have something like a yellow color over here and i can just choose that and then i can go ahead and pick another color and choose that for the background and now if i turn on the layer off that's how it looks maybe that's not something i want but you can always go ahead and choose a different color for the sketch very handy if you want to change the color of your line work as well all right with that said i feel like it is really really ignored and that is why i pointed it out but with that said let me go ahead and create a new layer just to new file just to show you how it works with the new motion layer capability so this is a brand new file i have no layers on it nothing at all let me go ahead and select a brush from the effects brush tab it's probably the ink spread brush that i want to use um let's turn on the grids over here as well so if you've seen my video about motion and fresco you know how motion works but if you haven't hey tap on this link and you will be redirected to my motion and fresco video tutorial watch it and you can come back right here pick it up okay so we have motion layer right here there is only one frame which is empty right now let's go ahead and put something down this is frame 1 Let's go ahead and create another frame right here. Maybe the ink is spreading a little more. Some more ink everywhere. And then very apt this brush. You <laughs> call Webster. All right. So we have these, and um, I want to select less number of frames so that it's not very jarring for you to watch. And then let's click on play all. Now you can see the frames are working as expected. but what if i want to change the position of some of the frames from the motion layer initially it was possible to select one of the frames and drag it up but it was not possible to select all of the frames all at once and transform their positions but now with today's update it is possible so let's go ahead and click on the transform button and this fun little dialog box pops up asking whether you want to transform the selected frame or the entire layer Let's just click on the entire layer. Everything, if you look at it closely, everything in this motion layer is selected, and I can just resize it, move it around in the space. Click on OK, and now if we play all, everything has been moved. So super fun, very handy feature if you use frame by frame animation in Fresco. Super fun, very handy, very time saving, and again, I love it. <laughs> all right, so we've covered the recent brushes, we've covered the eye dropper tools. we have covered how you can use a reference layer and transform all frames in a motion layer let's go ahead and download the new winter 2022 brushes that come with the dobi fresco i think i already have them downloaded so if you go over here um, i'm going to unfollow it just to show you how you do that i can go to my brushes panel click on the plus icon right here click on discover new brushes and you have the winter 2022 brush set right here It says that this unique set delivers stylized winter trees inspired by mid-century modern minimalism. It's beautiful. Take my word for it. Click on the follow button. There's a lot of tree brushes in there. Very wintry and super fun. Right over here, there's a winter 2022 brushes, and we have all of these fun brushes. I think this is a snowflake. Let's go ahead and select like a blue color in here, and I'm not. I'm on the wrong layer. <laughs> Team wrong layer. All right. So this is a very fun snowflake brush. We have mountains as well. We have, I think, there's a lot of tree brushes in here as well. Let's go ahead and see how those look. Super cool brush size. The highest brush size I didn't go to is five thousand pixels, and the lowest is one pixel. Let's choose somewhere in between, which is forty. This is too small, <laughs> but you can go as big or as small as you want and create tree stacks. super simple super fun and i definitely recommend using all kyle d webster brushes i do them myself all the time and it's worth it okay the last and the best 
feature if you draw a lot in perspective is the perspective grid capture. You can create perspective grids automatically from an imported image layer or your entire document in the precision panel. So you have this guy right here. This is the precision panel where you turn on the alignment guides, the grids, the grid type can either be graph or perspective grid. Let's go ahead and select perspective and maybe choose one point perspective. And over here, you can increase or decrease the density of the lines in the perspective grid. You can turn down or turn up the opacity, change the grid color. Let's change the grid color to blue and let's create something from an image. So I click on image and it gives me four options. You can select something from your camera, your camera roll, which is photos, your files, which are on the iPad or even on cloud and also your creative cloud. So that's pretty fun. Let's go ahead and select photos. And I just want to choose this one for right now. It's loading. Hey, that created a one point perspective with just one click. Super easy, super handy. And I hope this tutorial really helped you out. Let's go ahead and come back. Say thank you to you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. You learned some new updates about Adobe Fresco today. I hope these help you. The recent brushes feature is my favorite. Tell me what's your favorite from the recent brush update from the eyedropper improvements. Does it say time for you? Anyway, for all that fun stuff, that's the comment section below the video. Make sure to like and subscribe over here on YouTube. I am also planning to go live on YouTube. So if that's something that you are interested in, make sure to subscribe to the channel to get notified when I go live and when I upload a new video. But until then, stay safe and stay creative, folks. Bye for now.